things that uh, the, the public uh, just simply said that we had enough of this. We had enough of, of, of it. We don't believe a, a single word that politicians and, and unfortunately senior scientists are telling us. Now, the reason why I was uh, um, uh, sort of loved by the public because I was the, the little guy. Uh, they said that there is no conceivable reason why he, he should uh, lie to us. He has nothing. Uh, he, got, he lost his job. <laughs> in the process, so so um, uh, and uh, the, the way it up, uh, you know, uh, Monsanto or the big biotech companies on one hand, and there is this little guy who seems to be a very good scientist and he doesn't want to eat uh, GM. Uh, so so I think that they they rather believe me than than uh, the others. Now I want to say to you that independent science is really a myth nowadays because there is no legal and social protection of the scientists. And uh, first, uh, uh, I want to tell you something about uh, our GM potato studies, because uh, you may have heard something about them, but I'm not quite sure whether you heard the uh, right thing. So now you hear it from the horse's mouth. Um, uh, we live in Scotland, uh, it's an uh, almost independent country within the United Kingdom, and uh, we have a, an agriculture uh, ministry who by 1995 uh, thought that we ought to have a look at this newfangled thing called G GM food, uh, because if you look around uh, in the scientific literature, you find absolutely nothing about it. And uh, <clears throat> they have a very boldly uh, commissioned a three-year multi-center research program uh, costing 1.6 million pounds, uh, about uh, 3 million US dollars in those days. And uh, this is uh, uh, under my coordinatorship uh, was uh, running three institutes uh, um, looking at the prob uh, this problem from different angles. Uh, and uh, the, our main task was uh, really not uh, um, uh, to do individual looks, uh, take uh, an individual look at uh, uh, some of the GM crops, uh, but uh, uh, our main task was to establish credible methods for the identification of a possible human, animal health, and environmental hazards of genetically engineered uh, foodstuffs. And they, these uh, um, uh, methods, these credible methods, which we were supposed to come up with, uh, then can be used by the regulatory authorities for risk assessment of all GM foods as a model to look at the problem uh, with experimental methods and see what we'll come up with. Uh, the, these GM potatoes uh, had increased resistance to aphid and nematode pests. These are pests in, uh, in Scotland. Uh, I expect they are pests in uh, every other country, but uh, it, it, particularly in, in Scotland. The reason why we used these GM potatoes uh, was A, because we could not get any uh, bona fide material from uh, companies like Monsanto to carry out the studies with, unless we signed away our soul in a contract in which they just said that, that if, we're, if you uh, use our material, the results will belong to us and you will not be able to publish them. So that would have uh, somewhat uh, de defeated the purpose of the whole exercise to have an independent look to come up with credible methods. But as, as it so happened, the, uh, uh, there is a small, uh, relatively small uh, uh, agricultural biotechnology company in Cambridge called Ca Cam uh, uh, Cambridge Genetics, uh, who, with our help and previous work, we converted the GM, uh, the potatoes into uh, GM potatoes. And it also had an advantage that uh, both the uh, uh, untransformed 
So the original material was available and also the, the GM, uh, which was uh, very important because all the things which we do with the uh, risk assessment is uh, truly uh, uh, make a comparison. We compare the one which we think we know, it's the original, to with the uh, new which we don't know. And we see if there are any differences, these differences are meaningful from a biological point of view. And uh, therefore, that is the uh, simplest way to approach the, the whole problem. Now, uh, we are very good, uh, not just we, but generally the biotechnologists, because if you have an, a, 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 a task, as just as in our case, to protect the, the potato plant against aphids, we do all our studies and we eventually come up with something that will do the job, will protect the, the, the uh, plant against uh, the, the insect or whatever you want it to uh, um, protect them from. Uh, so we achieved this. There's no problem with it, but we took it a, a bit further. We also looked at what is happening to uh, uh, all the other insects. Some of them are beneficial, which are protecting the, the, the uh, plant under normal conditions. For example, the ladybugs, as you call them in, in uh, uh, North America, we call them ladybirds. Uh, and we wanted to see, all oh, right, that the aphids are affected, uh, are the ladybirds uh, affected as well? And we found that they were affected. They, they, it's not very surprising, they, uh, uh, the aphids, and then the, the same poison that uh, uh, poisoned the uh, aphids did also poison the ladybirds. So we didn't do, uh, didn't achieve too much. We just uh, broke up the natural balance, uh, the ecological balance in nature. But for us, what was the most important, uh, and that was never asked uh, previously by uh, anyone, any groups, that uh, what happens to that potato if we eat it? And uh, this is rather surprising <laughs> that because it was produced for eating, but ne it never actually went that far in the uh, other people's uh, approach. They said that, that it is absolutely safe. You put in a tiny little bit of uh, DNA, and it just expresses an, a fantastically small amount of, of, of protein. The potato is still a potato. Now, we thought that uh, perhaps we ought to uh, actually uh, see if it is as uh, uh, healthy and as uh, uh, unharmful for us. And uh, obviously the animal, uh, so you, you cannot do these studies straight away unless you are a biotechnology company. You cannot use people for eating it. We, uh, we use uh, laboratory animals in, in, in the uh, uh, in the animal house, and uh, we did uh, these studies just like as if it had been any other feed. It's, it's, from the point of view of, of evaluation, it is just another feed. Um, so we already had a, a lot of uh, methodologies which we worked out in 30 years, and that's a, a very fair amount of that is published in those, some of those 300 papers which we published. Um, so uh, the trouble was that we found that, that the, uh, uh, for some reason or other, which was not uh, uh, at the time very clear to us, because we selected out the gene that it wouldn't do certain things, and it did do those things. And when uh, we selected out that uh, gene, uh, we found that the gene product, even at 800-fold concentration in an artificial diet, didn't do all the things that the 800 times less uh, gene product did in the genetically modified potatoes. So uh, this was a, a totally unexpected uh, thing for, for us. 
I have to tell you that right at the beginning, when we started out this work, uh, I thought it was the, one of the greatest ideas. Unfortunately, uh, our uh, perception of what is good is dependent on our knowledge. And our knowledge, uh, not just ours, but generally uh, uh, the knowledge, the scientific knowledge, was deficient. So, so we, here we were. Uh, we got 1.6 million uh, pounds from the British taxpayer to do a job uh, because uh, they have already introduced some uh, genetically modified uh, material uh, foods, GM soya, GM uh, 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 corn, uh, into the British diet. Uh, they were not uh, uh, advertising it. So even uh, we didn't know about it till the third year when the, uh, our Minister uh, of Agriculture went to uh, Brussels uh, to vote in the Ministerial Council whether they should uh, uh, regulate or what should they do with uh, genetically modified foodstuff. And uh, um, I was supposed to advise him because we were the only people who did these studies in, in Europe. Uh, so I said that, uh, hold your horses. It's, uh, it's not... uh, it became clear uh, that uh, the GM had a, a slower growth. It had uh, problems with uh, internal uh, development of its organs. And it certainly uh, knocked out the immune system. That was one of the uh, well, two sentences. Uh, and then uh, the other thing I did say that, uh, um, and I very strongly believe in it even now, that we do have uh, all the methods available for testing, testing the safety of, uh, of uh, GM uh, crops. And uh, I think that uh, I did also say that um, this is, uh, it will be unfor unf unforgiven by uh, humanity if we don't uh, do it but use them as our guinea pigs. So um, that was it. Um, uh, we had been doing this research. We were three years into it, uh, well into it. And, and I started out, and most of the, the team started out that this is a great idea. And then we started to get the results. And the results uh, did tell us otherwise, yeah. that there are problems. And these problems ought to be addressed rather than swept under the carpet. Uh, so we were getting results which uh, I, as a scientist, could not uh, uh, just come to terms with. And then the, the question was, uh, so what shall I do? Uh, and we agreed uh, w uh, with um, most of the senior people in, in, in our group that uh, um, it ought to be exposed. You see that all that uh, $1.6 million, every penny came from the British taxpayer. So they were uh, financing this program. So uh, the results ought to be uh, told uh, to them because uh, they were paying for the, the research. and. Uh, uh, now, I didn't do anything uh, because the, the television company came to us. They knew uh, it was in the air that there is uh, something going on. And the public was really very keen to hear it. And uh, they came to us. And of course, the director agreed to it uh, because he was not involved. He could only see the, this, this uh, huge publicity that will be coming out of it. And uh, so agreed to it. In fact, uh, when the uh, uh, people uh, from the television company came, uh, our PR officer was sitting in on the interview. So they cannot, uh, couldn't have pleaded uh, uh, you, you know, uh, th uh, that, that they, they didn't know anything about it. They knew about it and they approved it. Uh, nevertheless, uh, when the chips were done, when the political pressure came, they had to do something about it. And this is uh, uh, how I uh, suffered at the end. Uh, you see, we knew, uh, knew the director in front of the UK Parliament, where we were both up against, that he said that, that uh, 
Uh, the interview was uh, broadcast at, at 8 o'clock on a Monday evening, on the 10th of, of uh, August. And by 11 o'clock a.m. that morning, I had been uh, taken out of the system. My uh, telephone had been switched up to the director who marshaled together all the secretaries who were taking and uh, logging all the calls. And uh, uh, he, he jumped about, uh, to, went to the television studios. I uh, was taken out. Uh, I didn't get any emails either. So, so because he wanted to have all the, uh, the glory of it. So um, um, we were getting a bit worried about it because you go home and in the evening you see this uh, goon uh, running about and telling uh, people uh, something uh, that I knew was not true. But then uh, when uh, the chips were down and the pressure started up, that he made out that I advised him to say those things. And um, uh, now uh, the, the, the best thing for them uh, was that I had to sign a contract each year because I was already retired. So and in the contract it says that I cannot say anything without the written permission of my director. So he just simply said that, that uh, from now on you can't say anything. So whatever he did say, I could not uh, come up and say that, that that's untrue. So this is a, f a fantastic uh, uh, way of, of uh, uh, you know, destroying someone. Because I couldn't, uh, so for six and a half months, I couldn't say anything because uh, my um, uh, son-in-law was a, a sheriff, which is the judge in, in Scotland, uh, and, and the, um, uh, uh, my daughter is uh, the uh, procurator fiscal, this the, uh, uh, the people who, who, who prosecute you, and they were both uh, highly legal, and they looked through the, the documents, and they, they said that uh, they had shut up because they were asking for un limited damages because I destroyed the Institute's good name and therefore they will not be able to get any money. And uh, so I, they, uh, the sky was the limit. They could have asked for anything. So I decided that I, I shut up. Uh, but my uh, um, uh, colleagues, the, between the two of us, my wife and myself, we uh, coordinated four major European research programs. So, so we were well known. And those two people said that, Arpad, what is happening? We don't recognize this. You must really tell us. But <laughs> our data had been taken away. So it had to be the um, uh, parliament telling uh, uh, James, the uh, director, that he must return the data to us. Now that was different because in confidence there is nothing in the contract to say that, that uh, you cannot discuss uh, scientific results with your colleagues providing they do not get out so they are not published. So the, the, uh, there were over 30 uh, scientists, uh, eventually 24 of them signed a memorandum in which they said that, that uh, we had looked at the, at the data without disclosing what the data were. We had looked at the data. This is uh, 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 peer reviewed by 24 of us. They're okay, good. And in any case, the, these Stalinist techniques uh, are not uh, permissible in, in a free society. So that was when, when the, the, um, uh, the UK Parliament had to come in and they invited uh, both of us in front of them. So from there on I could speak because that uh, uh, overridden the, my contract. Uh, the Parliament is the highest uh, or legal authority in the land. So they said that I have to uh, tell them what, uh, what I knew. So the, the contract was finished. So I'm the only uh, public uh, scientist in Great Britain who can speak. All the others uh, can only speak if they, the director will let them to speak. You got it all uh, in a nutshell. 
because we were the only people who did uh, uh, any GM work in a country, that is to say evaluation of the effects, not uh, creating the GM, but uh, looking at uh, what uh, possible effects it will have. They, it was pretty well known that in all Europe we were the only people who did this work. Uh, we in fact won that contract against 27 opposition. So um, uh, that's, that was the, the reason why they came to us. The interview was, uh, they interviewed for the whole day, which was then uh, uh, got down to 14 sentences and 150 seconds. And the, uh, I can tell you what uh, I did say, it was very simple. One was that uh, we did uh, have a, um, a comparison of uh, GM with non-GM potatoes. Uh, we fed uh, that as a part of a, a, a proper diet to rats and uh, we measured all sorts of things. Growth, for example, how these young animals were growing, uh, what happened to their inside and what happened to their immune system. The interview was uh, uh, in 1998, uh, August the 10th, uh, it was broadcast uh, and it was not with the BBC, it was with the ITV. Uh, it was a very famous program, it's called, uh, uh, um, oh, yeah, there you are, very, um, um, it doesn't matter, I'm not going to say what program it was. Uh, uh, and uh, that program was dealing with a, a genetic modification and its uh, effects on both uh, people and uh, uh, the, on the environment. Uh, World in Action. It's a topical uh, half an hour program. Very famous, in, in, certainly in, in Britain. And uh, you see that the main problem was with uh, this GM food business that. Uh, the GM foods, that is GM soy and GM uh, uh, corn, were introduced uh, sort of under the counter. Um, by the time this uh, uh, broadcast went out, uh, it was about uh, 15, 18 months, uh, uh, the British public were eating the stuff without knowing that uh, uh, they just kept very quiet about it. Uh, to give you an idea that uh, uh, all, three years into the program, we were the only people who did this job. And it took three years uh, for us uh, to realize that the public are eating this stuff. Even we didn't know it. So I think that uh, um, uh, they tried to make it uh, uh, such that there will be no um, a problem uh, reaction by the the consumers. Uh, you have to remember that that we had a number of uh, food scares. Uh, uh, the the BSC the, the um, uh, mad cow disease was just uh, uh, just about uh, so, uh, and uh, the politicians always uh, said on TV and everywhere in newspapers that uh, uh, there is no nothing to worry about. Uh, this will. Uh, I heard the chief veterinary officer saying it in public uh, on TV that it's inconceivable that this uh, mad cow disease will pass uh, through the uh, species barrier and will be um, uh, affecting humans. And then they had to admit it uh, just about um, uh, a year before. So the pu public had a very good idea that, that the politicians do lie. Yes, uh, I think that the genome is such a complex uh, thing. Just imagine uh, like let's say the human brain, if you want to insert a bit, you change what is already there. So the connections are disrupted. And what is happening uh, in the reality, we know it from the human genome, that one gene codes uh, for six proteins on average. There are genes which code just for one, but there is one which can code for, for 16 or 32, or in theory for 38,000. So if you disrupt the structure inside the gene, how can you make sure that it will work properly? 
it doesn't really matter how do you disrupt these connections inside the cell. So that's the disagreement between us. Um, uh, the truth will be out. I was absolutely sure about it. Now, uh, even the Royal Society asked for my advice. So 10 years is a long time in science. Uh, they do realize uh, that uh, what we said was quite all right. The uh, European Union is now uh, setting up a protocol for uh, testing, which is based on our protocol. So uh, people are asking for uh, reviews and articles from me. So I, I think that um, we can understand that, that uh, Tony Blair gave the job of, to James, the, my director, former director, that, that he should destroy me. He couldn't. And uh, um, it was a very unpleasant time. There's no doubt about it. Don't, don't make any mistake about it. It was a, a terrible time in my life. But there you are. You were talking about the pancreas and the gut being affected. And, um, and we're certainly seeing problems with increased diabetes. How has, or has the corn, even if it's not GMO, has it increased in carbohydrates? Well, uh, of course, the, um, it contains starch. It's one of the starchy crops. Uh, 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 maize. Now, what happens to, uh, to maize uh, when it is genetically modified? Uh, they are rather reluctant to uh, investigate uh, the structure of, of, of starch because, as you know, that, that uh, some uh, um, uh, starch, for example, potato starch, is almost indigestible, so you can use it as a as a um, uh, fiber, we used it in, in our um, uh, rat diet. So there is a, a, a possibility of, of uh, major uh, changes. But you see, the, the effect of, uh, uh, on the pancreas and on the gut uh, has uh, only indirectly had something to do with the uh, uh, starch. What, what it does uh, uh, happen is that the, as a result of the uh, intake of uh, uh, Bt toxin, Bt toxin is a carbohydrate reactive uh, lectin. Now, I spent all my, this, is, this was my great faith. That I worked with lectins and we, we looked at, at the, the effects of that on the gut and on the pancreas. And these are direct effects. What you have is the Bt toxin uh, will bind to your gut, will go through the, uh, the gut wall, get into the circulation, and will go right to the, to the pancreas. And then it will affect it directly. Well, we have uh, published uh, papers in, for example, in a, 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 American Journal of Physiology, uh, the top journals, where we had shown that lectins do do this. So um, if you have a, a, an effect on the, uh, 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 you know, the, uh, there are two parts of the, of the pancreas. One is producing the insulin, and the other is, is producing the uh, uh, enzymes, which you said, that I haven't got en enough uh, for digesting the food. Uh, so you, you, uh, if you get into this system, you are getting into a real trouble. And I think that, that uh, the, the pa in all our experiments, we did four experiments with GM potatoes. And in all of those experiments, uh, the pancreas was affected. It's one of the commonest uh, occurrence uh, uh, consequence of, of, of uh, feeding GM potatoes to germs. So I think that, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's a Pandora's box. You open it, and, and then you can find practically anything. 
I'm sure mm -hmm. my wife will say something. Yes, uh, uh, obesity and diabetes started with intensive agriculture. And it's not my idea, it's Charles Brambrooks. What they found that if you intensively fertilize the land, the plant proteins are glycosylated. It means that sugar is sticking to the proteins within the plant. And it's the result of a stress which is induced by sugar. And that's the same thing what you can see with humans. Of course, diabetes is induced by sugar stress. But eating those plants which contain these glycoproteins, in spite of eating plant material which should be healthy for you, still induces a release of a lot of sugar, which can lead to uh, diabetes. Thank you. My question is uh, regarding your comments on glyphosate and the placenta. And it is a not uncommon practice to spray alfalfa with glyphosate and put it in the silo two days later. That product still has to be there. When that enters the food chain and then we eat those steers or whatever, what is the probability of that coming through to the human placenta? Well, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, as I understand, e even the uh, um, uh, for the FDA, not the FDA, APA, uh, the GM Alpha Alpha was uh, a step too far, so they would not uh, agree to it. Um, but it is uh, quite true that uh, glyphosate is one of the uh, most uh, uh, widely used uh, general herbicides. They use it for other things, uh, too, not just for the um, uh, uh, glyphosate-resistant uh, uh, plants. But the difference now is uh, that while they were using, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, more sporadically, now you are having these huge interminable lands with the ara soya. And they are just praying everything. And uh, in this Gaia, nothing disappears. It will get into the, uh, uh, the water supply. It will uh, get into the, 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 uh, the ground. It, will, it is a, a hormonal, it's, it's a <clears throat> hormone replacer. There is very good evidence for it. It's not just uh, from the fact that, that uh, uh, sea urchin eggs don't hatch uh, as well as uh, in the presence of, of, of glyphosate. So I think that, that um, uh, you have to, sooner or later, uh, come to a decision about it. Now, I, the only thing I can say is that uh, there is a, a similar product, uh, you probably all know it as Basta. It is uh, 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 glufosinate, and there are a number of glufosinate uh, resistant uh, uh, um, GM plants. The European Union has just outlawed uh, Basta. So that will mean, of course, because it's a package, that those plants will also be outlawed. Now, the, uh, the effect is, uh, is, is somewhat different, but uh, there are uh, common similarities. Uh, and I don't, uh, as I said before, I haven't got my uh, um, uh, crystal ball here with me, but I have a feeling that uh, the days uh, of uh, glyphosate use are numbered in, in, in Europe. Uh, Maybe that, that it's not so in, in, in North America, but in Europe, I would say that uh, sooner or later, probably the sooner, uh, even glyphosate will be outlawed. I'm sure you all know atrazine, uh, which is used on maize, and atrazine uh, took quite a while to be phased out because of the hormone disruptor effect and because causing aversion. So what is clearly seen in Argentina when glyphosate is really used in large quantities. There are uh, birth deficiencies, malformed babies, and lots of abortion. 
uh, which they can't explain with any other way. So I am afraid it's either from the environment or from the food or from the water, it's coming through. And uh, I would, well, advise very much against it, uh, partly because of its effect, but second, uh, because of the resistance of crops, uh, which is increasing so quickly. Uh, or, sorry, not crops, weeds in the crops. So it will be useless after a while, which means that you have to come up with something much more toxic. If I may add one other question is, uh, how can we maintain the integrity of organic with uh, so much uh, rampant use of uh, GM? Uh, you, you, you have a job. It's, it's a, an impossible job, I have to say. I, I mean, in, a, uh, in those uh, European countries uh, where there is a moratorium, such as, for example, in my old uh, country, uh, Hungary, um, or my new country, I'm more, more Scottish than Hungarian, um, we have a new GM grown, for, particularly for that reason, because uh, it is a one-way street. Once you introduce it, uh, you don't know what is going to happen. But one thing is sure, that all your organic crops will be contaminated. There is no doubt about it. Even those which are self-pollinating, because of uh, a sloppy workmanship, uh, using the same uh, 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 implements for, for GM and non-GM, uh, using the same silos for them, uh, and it is impossible uh, not to mix the two up. And uh, as a result of it, you see here in Canada, uh, you practically cannot uh, produce organic uh, canola because it is a, a very highly uh, 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 traveling uh, species. And, and you, you see it everywhere, uh, by the roadsides. And you see it also in Europe. Uh, now, what we, we, the, the, uh, I know the Hungarian situation uh, reasonably well. What they are, um, uh, we know that one day we'll have to give up the moratorium uh, because there will be pressure on us, but we are gaining time. Uh, and we already have a, a sort of coexistence uh, law in preparation, just in case if the moratorium does uh, fail in which uh, we make it uh, sure that uh, 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 there is a, any chance of, uh, of uh, uh, contamination of organic crops or even conventional crops by GM is uh, reduced to a minimum. Uh, for a start, a 400 meter separation. That's the minimum. Uh, the other thing is that anyone wanting to uh, uh, grow GM crops will have to go uh, to school and pass an exam and get certified that they can do it uh, without contaminating everybody else around. And uh, most importantly, all neighbors w w uh, to the GM crop, or the intended GM crop, will have to uh, get the consent of all the neighbors not growing GM crops. Let's hope that we don't need, I'm, I'm afraid uh, in, in, in Canada and the US, you have a real great difficulties of, of uh, having proper uncontaminated seeds. We benefit from this uh, because uh, most of the, uh, the second largest seed producers for the multinational uh, big uh, agribusiness companies is grown in Hungary under contract exactly for the reason that uh, we have no Monsanto 810 or Monsanto 863 growing in our land. So they know that we don't have to worry about uh, uh, horizontal uh, travel of, of, uh, of the genes.